All right, here's my second video on periodic function word problems. And in this particular uh, video, we're going to focus when they don't give us the equation. We have to actually write the equation from what's given. So the first thing we're looking at is this one. It says the tide goes in and out according to a periodic function. When the tide is out, which is low, a boat docked in the harbor is 8 feet above the ocean floor. But six hours later, at peak high tide, the boat is 44 feet above the ocean floor. Write a function that gives the height of the boat above the floor as a function of the time. So from here, uh, we're looking to write our function in this form right here. We want that, that form. Um, I'll explain why later I'm using a cosine function instead of a sine function. But our midline, to find our midline, they're basically telling us that the minimum is 8 and the maximum is 44. So the midline is going to be like the average of those, right? Um, if we have uh, 44 above and then 8 below, we know that 26 is going to be perfectly in the middle of those. So we just find the average to find our midline, and this will be the d value in our equation. Then we're going to find our amplitude, which is a, and that's our that's like our, our vertical stretch. That's our amplitude. And so I could do 26 minus 8, which is kind of this minimum, or I could do 44 minus 26 because it should be the same distance from the midline up to the maximum as it is from the midline down to the minimum, and that's going to be 18 in this case. So as we already knew, 18 units above 26 is 44, that maximum, and 18 units below 26 is 8, that minimum. And so then we got to find the B value, and this is kind of the most complicated uh, value to find. It's not the same thing as the period, but we need the period to calculate it. And our way that we calculate the period is we do, or the B value, is we do 2 pi divided by the period. And so what i got to think about here is this. We're starting at low tide. And then it says that six hours later we'd be at high tide. That means another six hours we'd be back at low tide and we've completed the full period. So what we need to recognize is that's a 12 hour period. So to calculate our B value we do 2 pi divided by 12. And that simplifies to pi over 6 and this is the B value that will go in our equation right there. Now we're starting at low tide, so I don't think we're really going to need any horizontal shift. So let's go ahead and graph this, and then from the graph, I think it will be pretty easy to actually write the equation. So we know that uh, 6 hours later, it's at a maximum, and then 12 hours later, it's back down to a minimum. So I kind of like to put my points, and our graph's going to look like this. It's going to go up, hit a maximum, and then come down and, and back to a minimum. So our function is going to be this y equals 18 because 18 is the amplitude and then we're going to use cosine because we're starting at a minimum. If our graph started on the midline it would be best to use sine but since it starts at a minimum we're going to use cosine and because of that I'm going to throw a negative in front of that 18 and the reason why is that our cosine function typically starts at a maximum and, and would do this right and so since ours is starting at a minimum, we need to create a vertical reflection. That's what the negative does. So negative 18 cosine, and then our B value, as we've established, is pi over 6, x, and then we have our uh, D value, our midline of 26. I'm not including that minus C because as we established, we didn't have any horizontal shift. So this is going to be your equation for this problem. Let's do one more example. In our next one, it says astronomers have noticed that the number of visible sunspots varies, okay? It varies from a minimum of about 20 to a maximum of about 100 per year. Further, this variation repeats over an eight-year period. If the last maximum occurred at 2014, write a cosine function which models the phenomenon in terms of the time x, which is the years since 2014. So we're starting with our, our same structure. They actually told us to do a cosine function, so we don't even have to think about that this time. But our first step is, is to calculate that midline. And, and just like the last one, they gave us that maximum of 100 and that minimum of 20, so we know that our midline is going to be perfectly between those at 60. That's 40 units away from 100 and 40 units above 20, which is kind of how we calculate our amplitude. For our amplitude, I could do 100, that maximum, minus 60, or I could do 60 minus that minimum of 20, but either way we're going to get that amplitude of 40, meaning we're going to go 40 units above 60 and 40 units below 60, as I've kind of shown in my graph there. Next, let's calculate that B value. The B value um, is calculated from the period, but remember, it's not the same thing as the period. So we have to do 2 pi divided by the period to get our B value. And so here that's going to be 2 pi divided by 8 because they gave us 
that this phenomenon repeats over an eight year period. So two pi over eight is equal to pi over four. And then um, we have no horizontal shift. So now I think we're ready to graph our equation. And then once we graph our equation, we'll be able to uh, write the equation. So uh, we know that eight is our period. So I'm gonna put a little four as a marker. Now what it says is the last maximum was in 2014. The last maximum occurred in 2014. So in 2014, I'm gonna put that maximum of 100. That means it must hit the minimum four years later, and then the maximum again eight years later. So our function is gonna look something like this. Okay, and so we're ready to write our equation. Y equals our amplitude is 40. We set a cosine function. This one, we don't need a negative 40 because we're starting at the peak, right? So 40 cosine, and then we're gonna put the B value of pi over four x, and then we're going to add our midline of 60 for our vertical shift. So this one also didn't have any horizontal shift. Um, but yeah, that's basically the, the gist of it. I would start by finding the midline amplitude, B value, and horizontal shift from the problem, and then it helps me to get a look at it on the graph before I try to bounce over here and write the equation.